Today's video is sponsored by Squad OV, a new way to analyze your World of Warcraft gameplay. Squad OV is a platform that lets gamers automatically record, index, and synchronize their gameplay with their friends using recorded video. Replays are created automatically in the background while you play. My favorite feature is this timeline that automatically creates bookmarks for important timestamps like player deaths and cooldown usage. Check out the link in the description below for more information. What's up guys, this is Preheat, and in today's video we're going to be talking Mage in 9.2, specifically what spec to bring for which boss. Because I know a lot of y'all have been asking me this question, what is the best Mage spec in 9.2? And unfortunately, I don't have a simple answer for you. Uh, it's not really that simple anymore, right? Fire got nerfed, so I think at this point, the best answer I can give you is, it depends, right? And uh, so we're going to be talking in this video what it depends on, right? We're going to be discussing the pros and cons of each Mage spec. And we're also going to be backing that up with some data from SimCraft, uh, some Sims I've been running that have one legendary, two legendaries, two piece, four piece, no piece, that sort of stuff. So uh, we're just going to be weighing it all together and trying to make a, a, an informed decision about what we're going to be playing in the next tier. So if you'd like to uh, hear more about that, let's just jump right into it. OK, so I'm going to start this off with a quick disclaimer. Now, I always say you don't want to just run simulations of each spec to compare them against each other. This is not a very good way to get an idea of which spec is going to be best in the raid. Why? Because most of the time, the best spec is not that far ahead of the second best or the third best, okay? And if they're close, then it really just comes down to the fight design. What sort of targets are we talking about? Is it single target? Is it AoE? Is there force downtime? Is there cleave? Um, like, is there a damage amp? There's a lot of factors in the fight which will actually determine which spec you want to play, right? Not even to mention, you know, defensives like ice block, greater invisibility, cauterize, that sort of stuff. So uh, this chart here is a representation of the data from Sims. It is not meant for you to just look at, oh, uh, Frost is so much higher than Arcane here. Uh, you know, that means Frost is the one, right? That's not what you should be getting uh, in, in terms of a takeaway from this, okay? What this is uh, showing us is how the DPS improves as we unlock two piece, four piece, double legendary that sort of stuff okay that's the more important thing that i'm trying to to show with this with this information so uh right here on the far left we have uh you know zero piece with just one legendary this is what domination sockets disabled if you're wondering why the dps is lower than right now um and these are all based off of my character as well so as a baseline we have these numbers here obviously frost is simming a little bit higher as a baseline uh but y'all can get an idea of uh of how these are and these numbers are all comparing it against the previous iteration here so with two piece we gain around three percent three point six eight percent damage for arcane i don't know why they nerfed this two piece i'm still i'm still honestly confused by the fact that this got nerfed uh you know fire is not really gaining much at all with two piece y'all already know that the two piece for fire is basically useless but then for frost we you know it's like eight you know 8.5 to 10 percent right so two pieces huge for frost basically is what this is showing us here okay big 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 gains from two piece and uh, the two-piece is actually what pushes Necrolord in front of Vintir here, if you actually look at the damage numbers. Um, these two change right here, but aside from that, everything else stays the same. Four-piece is a little bit interesting to talk about because I don't think most folks are going to have their four-piece second week, okay? Now, if you're in a guild where you go super hard and you have all these splits and you're, you know, you're clearing normal, you're clearing heroic, you're clearing mythic, you're like in a cutting-edge guild, right? Um, or like above cutting-edge. Uh, I think that four piece might be a possibility for you, right? But it's going to depend on your luck and it's going to depend on if they change things, right? Because they could all obviously change things after I make this video. So um, as of right now, Blizzard has stated basically that to get your tier gear, you have to get a token and that token can only be traded if you have a tier piece already equipped that's at a higher item level uh, or the same item level as the one that just dropped, okay? So if you were to do normal, for instance, and you got, uh, you know, a tier piece from normal and then you got a heroic upgrade, it's a very, very minor upgrade for you, but you can't trade it to anyone else, unfortunately. So just be aware that like even with splits, you may not necessarily get four piece, right? It's it's honestly RNG. So the best way uh, in my mind to guarantee that you get four piece next year is just make multiple of your same class. OK, uh, it sucks. Like I, I hate playing more than one mage, but uh, it's it's honestly the only way to guarantee or get, get close to guaranteeing that you get your four piece. So um, so yeah, uh, moving on, whenever we unlock our four piece, as you can see, most of the specs actually gain around the same amount of DPS from four piece. So, you know, we're going anywhere from like 5.5 to 8.5. That's kind of the ballpark here. Um, as you can see, fire gains more than the other two specs from its four piece, but not that much, right? Since they nerfed it. 
And uh, since fire doesn't really gain much from its two piece, its tier in total is kind of kind of not great, right? It doesn't really give you that much damage. Um, but uh, you know, frost definitely gains a bit here too, right? Because we already have all this gain from two piece, plus we have this four piece, looking pretty good. And then moving on from there, um, you know, Covenant Legendary is something that you're going to have much later down the road, uh, but I did want to include it here just to give you all an idea. So when it comes to the Covenant Legendary, Fire Night Fae once again just gets a, a stinker, right? 1.70. Basically, Fire doesn't really gain anything this next tier for your Night Fae unless you have your 4-piece. The 4-piece is really all you're getting, and uh, in total, it is the lowest of the increased damage, right? So this is the total gain. Assuming you have two legendaries and four piece versus if you have zero tier gear and one legendary, right? So in total, Necrolord Frost gains the most at 26%. And then of course, Night Fae Fire is just dead last, right? So kind of based off of my playtesting on the PTR, I think Vintir Fire is, is looking to be a little bit better than Night Fae uh, Fire in most cases. Unless, you know, like I said, there's a specific mechanic where you need combustion up and uh, you'd be holding combustion otherwise, right? That's event here, so just keep that in mind. That's not to say Night Fae Fire isn't good. I'm not trying to say that Night Fae Fire isn't good. I'm just saying that you don't really gain much power as the tier progresses. So just be aware that basically as soon as you get your four pieces Night Fae, you're pretty much capped out, okay? You're, you're done. Whereas Frost is gaining quite a bit, right? So, um, you know, as you approach this next tier, this, this is definitely good for you to know, and you want to, you know, keep your options open. I recommend being able to swing any spec that is... Uh, that's available to you that way you can you know choose whichever one is going to be best for your fight but uh you know i wouldn't say frost is necessarily the go-to here okay frost is good there's no doubt about it frost is going to be really good next year it's going to be the go-to for mythic plus for sure okay but in the raids there are some things that make frost maybe not as desirable so this is something I talk about a lot. This is uh, basically the DPS is is charted out here for all three specs. So as you can see at the very start here, uh, like fire and, uh, and and arcane are actually quite high here on this meter. So if we're looking right here, right, they both peak out pretty high. Uh, whereas if you look at frost numbers, right, like frost caps out right here, right? That's the highest frost ever gets. But the reason why I want to bring this up is because even though frost looks really, really good in the Sims, it may not necessarily be the spec that you play for every fight. The reason why is because some fights will have mechanics in them or force downtime that make Frost not quite as good as the other specs. For the most part, Frost is kind of stagnant, right? It's a, it's a very sustained DPS kind of class to play. But Fire and Arcane are very bursty, right? Very, very high peaks and low valleys. So if you were to have something happen in the fight, they basically cut out this whole portion right here, right? So let's say that a thing happens in the fight and this whole portion, you can't DPS at all for this, right? Well, if you look at like the DPS value, whenever you get to around this right hand side of this bar, right, you're going to see that Arcane and Fire are doing way more damage than, than Frost, right? Because if there's force downtime like this block, whenever there's, uh, whenever there's like damage happening here, right, even if it's over here on the right, you're still going to have a lot more damage from Arcane and Fire. The reason why is because Frost needs, Frost needs that uptime. You got to be consistent with your uptime to do good damage as Frost, right? Like you lose more during this part right here as frost than you do as arcane or fire, right? Like the arcane and the fire bars are lower. So if there's ever mechanics that basically interrupt your gameplay, that make it so that you can't use your cooldowns for a time, it's it's gonna be a disadvantage for frost in most cases, right? Because you have that that high sustained damage, uh, which can be good for other reasons, right? But, but when it comes to force downtime, burst is always gonna be better. So if you want to get an idea of what it would look like for like the cooldown classes whenever there's force downtime, obviously you're not going to be using combustion whenever you're not able to hit the boss. So you would obviously just use your cooldowns as soon as the boss reemerges. So I'm just showing this here to kind of illustrate how um, if you were to push this to the side here, it would actually move your cooldowns to the right. It's it's pretty obvious, but I feel like that's important to show. Um, anyways, so yeah, uh, Frost has, you know, high sustained damage. It's it's looking like it does a lot of AoE. Like, seriously, Mythic Plus is Frost. <laughs> like, Frost is really good Mythic Plus, so definitely try out Frost and Mythic Plus. But in Raid, uh, which is why I'm kind of focusing on this video, uh, you know, Frost is kind of uh, sustained, right? Like, not really all that bursty. So because of that, uh, you know, there may be cases where you don't end up going frost because you want to have that burst for certain situations, or maybe there's a lot of force downtime and you aren't able to keep up your icy veins because you're not able to hit the boss the whole time. So just keep that in mind, right, as you go forward. 
Uh, but, you know, assuming that that part isn't all that important, I think Frost is definitely a solid choice for this next raid. In fact, I'll probably be trying out Frost on every fight. We hopped on the PTR because I want to talk about the, the raid bosses on a boss by boss basis. Uh, disclaimer here, I'm basing this off of my own PTR testing. These bosses, some of them have changed since the PTR test, since the last one. So I'm just going to be basing it off of my experience and not off of what the new boss is. Although, uh, I'm sure we're going to find out more, right, uh, if they do another test or, you know, Heroic Week, if they don't do another batch of testing here. But, um, so, what are you looking for for Fire, Arcane, and Frost? Well, I think Arcane's biggest uh, advantage is that you have greater invisibility, right? It's a very, very strong defensive, and you also have uh, something I like to refer to as Snap Funnel. So, if you were to do, uh, like, a, an Arcane Barrage, right, and there was a bunch of targets that spawned around the boss, think Fate Scribe, for instance, right? A bunch of small adds that have no HP, they spawn at an exact moment in the fight, and it's a very predictable spawn, right? Uh, you can get 60% more damage on your Arcane Barrage by having that 5 target funnel, right? And you don't even need the adds to be alive by the time your Arcane Barrage hits. Like, the adds could literally die, and as long as you see those Arcane Barrages multiple leave your hands, then you got the damage increase on the boss, right? So this is why I call it Snap Funnel. It, most Funnel requires you to be able to like constantly hit the adds so that you can gain damage on the main boss. Arcane is different and that you only need it for that one to two globals, right? The, the Barrage and the Arcane Orb. Um, so Arcane is definitely very, very strong if adds are dying extremely quickly, if you don't get to funnel off them very much. If you can funnel off them, obviously Frost is going to be really, really good for that situation because Frost has very good funnel. And then Fire, you know, you're, you're looking for Execute. You're looking for situations where you need that uh, you know, that short cooldown, and you're also looking for fights where cheat death is really good. Spoiler alert, it's like every boss. Every boss cheat death is good. Anyways, um, but, uh, you know, going boss by boss here, the first boss, obviously, you know, it's the first boss, who cares, but uh, Arcane's looking to be really, really strong on this boss, uh, especially since the adds die fairly quickly. If this fight ends up being hard and the execute is actually difficult, then, you know, you'd probably favor fire for it. Uh, on the Worm Boy, uh, this fight, I was playing Fire a lot, and I actually was dying to my own dot damage. Luckily, they've removed that aspect, so, you know, don't have to really worry about that too much. But I was actually enjoying Arcane quite a bit on this fight, and I do like the damage mitigation you can achieve with Arcane. So, this one for me, is it's probably, it's kind of a toss-up, but uh, I would say, based off my testing, probably Fire Arcane. Uh, possibly just, you know, play Frost if, if that's why I end up, <laughs> if I end up with two-piece, probably, you know. Two-piece is a pretty big game for Frost, so I'd probably go with two-piece then, in that case. Uh, or sorry, with Frost with two-piece there. Um, with Zymox, I think that if you're on AoE duty, uh, Arcane and Fire, they're going to do absolute wonders on those platforms. But, uh, you know, if the fight ends up getting changed a little bit, or maybe if you aren't favoring AoE as much, if you're mainly just killing the boss, uh, you know, I could see all three specs being very good for this fight, but Frost would probably be pretty good. Um, with the Sane, uh, I think that this is a firefight, just in my opinion, but, uh, you know, we'll see, right? Obviously, things could, uh, things could change, but fire seemed, like, really strong for this, especially with the Ignite cleaving on the adds. You can basically have, uh, like, a really good Ignite to cleave on every single add if you have SKB. For Pantheons, I think this is a Frost fight. I don't really see this fight going any other spec, honestly. Necrolord Frost in this fight is going to be absolutely nuts. Uh, for Lahuvium, uh, Fire was really strong. Arcane seems like it m might be good as well. I mean, this one is also, you know, any fight where I say Fire looks like a good spec for the fight, unless I give a caveat, it's probably a toss-up, okay? Uh, and this fight's been redesigned so many times, but uh, based off of what I've seen so far, I, I'm going to lean more towards Arcane on this one just because there's a lot of movement in this fight. And if you play uh, Arcane with, like, Slipstream... And if you've got your uh, Chrono Shift, you know how people always talk about how Arcane can't really damage while it's moving? Well, that's just wrong. That's fake news. Arcane is actually insane on the move, and this boss runs a lot. So uh, I would say on this one, you probably want to play Arcane. That's just my own opinion so far. But Fire's probably going to be pretty strong too. I, I probably, I wouldn't play Frost on this one. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe the fight changes, right? They redesigned it. I haven't done it since they redesigned it. So who knows? Maybe Frost ends up being the way to go here. Uh, for Anduin, this was a frost fight, in my opinion, uh, on the PTR that, you know, they're changing this fight a little bit more again, so uh, who knows, right? If the down phase isn't like a three-minute cooldown in between uh, the, the damage amp, right, whenever you're able to hit the shade that comes out, then this could very well end up not being a frost fight anymore. But uh, based off the testing I've done, Necrolord Frost looked very strong on Anduin. 
And then, of course, the last three, we don't know, right? Like, we can make guesses based off the, uh, based off the abilities and the dungeon journal, but there really is no way to tell until we actually do the, these fights. Um, so it's kind of cool that we don't really know what's going on with these, uh, aside from the dungeon drill. But, um, but yeah, so for the first week, I mean, you know, I, I said all three specs, right? And that should like give you an idea of where my head's at when it comes to this stuff. All three specs are good. Okay. So if there's any takeaway you get from this video, please let it be that all three mage specs are looking very, very good in the next patch. And none of them is standing out as like the winner automatically, okay? Unless you're talking about Mythic Plus. If you're talking about Raid, uh, you know, it, it's going to be on a fight to fight basis, okay? So hopefully this gives you the tools that you need to identify which fight uh, might be better for you to swap a different spec, which fights you should maybe start off. But I think as a baseline, a safe bet is just to start Frost. And then if you are having trouble with Frost, maybe change, uh, you know, the Fire or Arcane and then see if that plays out a little bit better, right? Uh, obviously, the, the, the best way to know what spec is best is to try them out. All right, that's it. Uh, you know, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you really liked it and you want to see more of my content, then go ahead and subscribe and ring that notification bell. That way you get notified whenever my new videos come out. Uh, but yeah, that's that's all I really have for right now. I'm sure that we'll have more information whenever the, the patch actually drops, whenever we actually get those finalized patch notes for how our classes are going to be. And then, uh, you know, they may even balance it Heroic Week, so... This isn't final, right? We, we always could uh, have things throw, throw us for a loop at the last second. But um, anyways, thank you all for watching. I appreciate y'all sticking through to the end, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Oh my god, my cat's literally throwing up in the middle of this. Are you kidding me, baby kitty? Are you kidding me, baby kitty? She's literally, <laughs> she just started heaving as I was talking. <laughs> god, why? Why, dude? Oh man, I love cats. They're so funny.